So, in a previous video we were thinking about these uh, problems with one-dimensional motion. So I've just got something moving either, you know, maybe it's just going up or down or something, or perhaps it's just going uh, across, but it's just moving in one direction. And we've uh, worked out that the velocity is the rate of change of displacement with respect to time, and acceleration rate of change of velocity with respect to time. So we can differentiate uh, a formula like s equals t to the 4 plus uh, 7t or something to get the velocity is 4t cubed plus 7 and an acceleration of 12t squared or something like that. And an immediate consequence of this is that um, if I wanted to I could also go in the other direction. So if the acceleration is dv by dt that means that v is kind of the uh, integral of the acceleration with respect to time. So I could just, if I differentiate to go one way, I can integrate to go the other way. And similarly, this displacement is the integral of the velocity with respect to time. With the usual caveats that when I uh, integrate a function, I get, you know, I get a constant of integration. Um, so, uh, so for example, if I had an acceleration that was given by 3t plus 4, to get the formula for the velocity, well, I would need to integrate 3t plus 4 with respect to time, and that would give me then uh, 3t squared over 2 plus 4t, and then some constant. Okay, so if I'm going to be able to work out this constant, I need to know some more information. You know, for example, you know, if I'm told in the question that v equals 3 when t equals 0 or something, well, then um, if time is 0 in this, I need to get v equals 3, so I'd have 3 equals 0 plus 0 plus c, so I would just get c equals 3, uh, and so my formula would be that the velocity is 3t squared over 2 plus 4t plus 3. Okay. Um, then if I wanted to, I could get the acceleration and that would be the integral of the velocity with respect to time. So integrate again, and I would get t cubed over 2 plus 2t squared plus 3t, and then I'd get another constant here. Okay, Sorry, not this, this isn't the acceleration, this is the uh, displacement. Um, to get the acceleration, I would differentiate v with respect to time. Here I'm getting the uh, displacement by integrating. So. And again, I might be told something like, you know, maybe, you know, s equals 2 when t equals 0. I mean, it's, e it's always easier if I get told the information when t equals 0, because all of these terms are 0, and then I would get, in the same way as above, um, I would just get that this constant is 2, say, and so I'd get my formula for the displacement. Now, in some ways, this is an extension of what you already know and have used in the past, that the um, if I had a velocity time graph, that the area under that graph is the displacement. Uh, and all I'm really saying is, okay, well, this doesn't have to be a straight line. Uh, this could be some other curve. As long as I can integrate it, that will tell me the area under here. So it's still the case that the displacement is the area under the velocity time graph, which is the um, this integral here. So actually, um, if I wanted the change in displacement, for example, between a one time here, t equals 1 or something, and t equals 3, I could just find the area by integrating as a definite integral between 1 and 3. And as always, you know, we've got to think about what's going on with the integration, you know, if actually my velocity went below the curve between 1 and 3, I just have to think about what, exactly what I want, because here I'd have a positive part and here a negative part, and the integral would offset them, but um, you know, so if I want just the if I want just the displacement, actually, I can still just do the integral. But if I want the distance traveled, I'd have to realize that okay, here from one to the, whatever this time here is, it's going up. If up is positive, and then from one that, and then from here to here, it's going back down again. So maybe it ends up here. The integral tells me the displacement. If I want the distance, I'd have to work out the total area here. Same. Okay. Anyway, um, this will come out when you look at some particular problems. Okay, so suppose I've got this as my velocity um, and a formula, and I want to find some different things here. Okay, so uh, so firstly, the uh, initial velocity, well, that's easy. I just put in t equals 0, and I get 
v equals 4 meters per second. The times when it's at rest, that's the times when the acceleration is zero, so it might be here to start off with and perhaps it goes up for a while and it just stops before it moves back down again. So actually it's a time when the acceleration is zero, uh, sorry not when the acceleration is zero, when the velocity is zero, uh, when it's just instantaneously at rest. Okay, so actually I can just uh, solve this quadratic equation 2t squared minus 6t plus 4 equals 0 and that gives me t squared minus 3t plus 2 equals 0 which is um, t minus 2 t minus 1 equals 0 so actually there'll be uh, two times when it's at rest when t equals 1 or t equals 2 um, to work out the uh, acceleration uh, at t equals 5, let's have a look at that one. Uh, well, the acceleration is dv by dt, so I can just differentiate to get 4t minus 6, and when t equals 5, then the acceleration is 4 times 5 minus 6, that's 14 meters per second squared. Um, and for the displacement at t equals 6, okay, well the displacement I need to integrate uh, with respect to time, 2t squared minus 6t plus 4, so I get uh, a formula which is uh, t cubed, 2t cubed over 3 minus 3t squared plus 4t plus some constant and, uh, okay, I need, we actually need some extra information in this question if I'm going to work out the constant. So let's just say that when t equals 0, uh, s equals 0, and that's given to us in the question. So, uh, in which case, if this is my displacement formula, when s equals 0, t equals 0, so actually that would mean that 0 equals 0 minus 0 plus 0 plus c, so actually c would have to just be 0. Okay, so it's quite, nice, quite a nice condition to get because it means I don't have to worry too much about the constant. So actually when s when t equals 6, I just need to plug 6 into this formula here, so 2 times 6 cubed over 3 minus 3 times 6 squared plus 4 times 6, which gives me 348 meters. And so if I want the change in the displacement from t equals 4 to t equals 6, well, I could also just work out the uh, displacement when t equals 4. Okay, uh, so when t equals 4, the displacement is 2 times 4 cubed over 3 minus 3 times 4 squared uh, plus 4 times 4 which gives 32 over 3. So the change in the displacement would be 348 minus uh, 32 over 3, which is 1012 over 3, or 337.3 recurring. Okay, so 1012 over 3. Oh, and I just realized I've made a slight mistake here. Actually, this wasn't 348. If you put all this into a calculator, you just get 60 meters. So actually, it's 60 minus 32 divided by 3. So actually, this is meant to be 148 over 3. Um, and actually, I noticed that because I wanted to show you that if you just do the in that this is just the same thing as doing in the uh, that I could do in the calculator here with the integral function, that this is the integral between. 4 and 6 of the velocity function, which works out exactly the same thing. So I've got, to, I could just type in 2x squared minus 6x plus 4. And I do that integral and I get that final answer there, 148 over 3. Because what's this doing? It's saying, okay, uh, integrate, integrate this, substitute in 6, subtract what you get when you substitute in 4, which is exactly what we've done here. We've said work out the displacement of 6 work out the displacement of 4 and subtract. So actually useful to have uh, that as a check as well. But we've got two different ways that are essentially doing the same thing. And of course the silver calculator does these integrals numerically uh, for you, which is very handy as well.